Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On our YouTube channel we talk about all things homesteading and then we break really expensive stuff and get ticked for the rest of the day. Okay, this is part two of our, what was supposed to be a dimensional lumber that we're going to mill for the barn and it turned into part one of me tearing up a bunch of stuff. So we're going to try to pick up there and continue on. We've got our log here. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, go back about four days or half a week or whenever this goes out. It's right there. Check out that video so you'll know what the expenses were to get this log sitting right here. <laughs> Hopefully we won't break anything else today. So let's go back to the barn and look at exactly what we need, get some measurements, and that'll determine how long I cut this log. So the plan is to put floor joists in on this span of the barn so we can put the floor of the loft in and of course start framing up the half wall of the loft. Uh, you can see, I think you can see this portion here where we've got these two by material. And I believe we're two by eight. Yeah, two by seven and a half. I think this one's a little heftier than that. But yeah, the two by ten and a half. So that becomes the $20,000 question. When you mill dimensional lumber, do you mill true dimension? So if I wanted to mill some two by eights, am I milling a board that's two inches thick by eight inches wide? Or do I mill conventional lumber where that would be one and a half inches thick and seven and a half inches wide? It doesn't really matter if, if I was going to be incorporating dimensional um, your regular lumber and milled lumber into this build project, then that could start to show up, especially when I go to stud something out. But right here for these floor joists, I don't plan on buying any wood for this. The plan is to mill everything for this barn, so um, I can do whatever. So I think what I'm going to do, just for the sake of saving material, I'm going to mill a one and a half by eight. So I'm going to do a mashup there. So we'll go one and a half inches thick to save on some thickness there so I can get a little bit more out of a log, but we'll just still go with the full eight inches wide to uh, just take advantage of that strength. So um, I know, huh, I say that, I built the barn so I don't know nothing. Um, nice double negative there. So we look at this and say the outside of my posts are 101 inches. So the inside of my posts are 90 and a half, so that's obviously under eight foot. So I could get away with actually cutting that log at eight feet and milling it out, and even when I come to true that up, to square up those ends so they fit nicely uh, as floor joists, then I could still be trimming that off. So I could literally get away with cutting that log to eight, eight feet, which is nice, that gives me uh, a lot more log to work with there, and, and this log actually has a bit of a, has a, bit of a uh, crooked leg to it, so we'll, uh, we'll have to cut around that as well. So we're going to mill less than eight feet long and then I need to figure out how many I want. These are on, I think I built these on 24s. Oh yeah, not even close to six. Those are built on 24s. Since this goes a little bit further, it's 10 foot, I may do on 16s. So I believe this is 10 foot. Let's walk through the bog here. What a mess. Okay. 12 feet. Woo! Somebody was very daring. You remember how long I built my barn? All right, so 12 feet. If I do on 16s, then we'll do the math there. If I do now on 24s, I'd only use six boards plus my ends, so that would be eight boards. So as you can see in this, uh, hopefully I've got the camera set up to show this, there's a bit of a bend in this log as it grew. And it really manifests itself about right here where this green leaf is. So any of this spot right here, if I incorporate that in the log, then I'm obviously milling parallel out of that. I'm going to lose a lot of material. So to get my eight feet out of this, I obviously don't want to start at the very end of the log because I got this big notch taken out and that's going to affect my material as well. So with my trusty assistant, sir. Do you mind holding that right there? Thank you. Happy day. Here is eight feet before we get to our bend. So I'm even going to play around a little bit with that because more is better. I'm just going to go ahead and come right here to this bend. All right, let go of that tape. I'm going to come to about right here between these two knots. And that's where I'm going to make my cut. Okay, so uh, first log cut at eight. Might as well cut the next one at eight or more. 
And since we cut right in the middle of that curve, we're actually going to take a little bit of that curve out. There's still going to be some that shows up. What we're going to do, do this knot right here. And you know, there's a pattern forming here, so let's just keep going. It's going to get down to where it's going to not make any sense to mill. Be too small to mess with, and it'll probably be right after this one. So on my third pass, this is, this is where dimensional lumber obviously becomes a little bit more work that you need to do. On my third pass, I made sure my pass was no less than eight inches in height from the, the deck. That's what I want. I want two by eights. So I decided to make my uh, two by eights, as we mentioned, inch and a half by eight. So this distance here is eight inches. So when I do my third pass, when I flip to do my fourth pass, then that's when I'm going to start cutting my two baits out of that. So what happens, it left a little bit of natural edge here. So when I flip this over 90 degrees and start cutting off, then I'm going to have, my last board's going to have some bark on it, and maybe my second board's going to have some bark on it. But it isn't a huge deal because I do have a nice, I'll have a nice square edge down here. And we'll see how many boards we get out of this. I'm estimating by the time we factor in curve, we may get five, maybe less. So. Uh, We'll see what we can do. Well, the column gets a little warm there with that exhaust. It warmed up my glove. Okay, so we've uh, milled two logs out of that one pine tree. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine one and a half inch by eight inch boards over eight feet long. Okay, so now that we've got our uh, two by eights milled, it's time to start putting them in place as floor joists for this next section of the barn. So just measuring off my uh, length here. We know we were less than eight feet, but we're just going to confirm for our actual actual nailing length. And we are, ouch, pinching my finger. We are 89 inches. So we'll start there and knowing the guy that built this barn, we'll take a measurement every couple feet because uh, I guarantee you it's not 89 inches at the end. <laughs>
Okay, so we got our uh, floor joists in, and uh, the, the poplar I milled a couple weeks ago for siding, I think, I think it may be better suited as flooring up here to really shore this up. This has a little bit of a shimmy to it, and nailing that flooring down is going to take that shimmy out of it. And that'll get us, again, closer to our plan here. So that's 10 foot long. This is 12 foot. So if I stagger it, we should be able to, to put that down. So that's okay, what we decided to do is got our joists in. We're going to go ahead and put some flooring down. And I debated back and forth on the old barn, old section of the barn, I had OSB. And that OSB over time has, has swollen a little bit, again, because I've had this end open and the water's gotten in there and swollen. I don't like it. It's expensive. It's heavy. It's a pain in the butt to work with. And we had milled, if you go back to one of our previous videos where we'd milled our first poplar, we had milled it originally for barn siding, like you see on this wall down here below us. Well, that's seven inch wide, three quarter inch thick. And that actually works pretty well for uh, plank flooring we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and stick that on the floor here. That way we can start to get this uh, somewhat weathered in. Again, it's not going to shed water since it's a flat roof. It's not like it's going to make the corral dry out, but uh, we can get that down. So that's what we're doing right now, getting that put down and um, we'll see if we've got enough for what we milled. Are those boards very heavy? Are those boards very heavy? I know what the problem is. Your pencil's in the wrong hand. your attention to detail that I appreciate. Very deliberate in your cuts. get the lousy job the uh, cutter has to stand in the mud. Do you want to come up and nail? Okay I can't put, I can't get that board right now because I'm filming. All right Kelly Cat I need uh, I think that next log that we milled was a little longer so that stack of poplar you have that stack of poplar you have my lips are frozen should be a little longer. Give me a total length on those boards there if you would. Bingo. All right so what I need is what I need. Okay, I need 122 and three quarter. All right, so we've got the all the boards that I had milled uh, out of poplar stuck up here. So here we've got a what is this? An eight by twelve? Yeah, almost an eight by twelve, roughly an eight by twelve floor that we've put down just with one poplar log or one poplar tree. I'm sorry, two logs. We cut two ten foot logs out of this one poplar tree, and we're able to get enough flooring here to almost finish it out. Now it's not completely finished out. You can see this. I staggered my boards to, to give it some more rigidity and just do the things I guess you're supposed to. So you can see it kind of looks like my, uh, kind of looks like the smile of my sixth grade girlfriend, missing a couple pieces there. But other than that, we'll fi fill that in with our last, uh, last little bit of milling we've got to do. So we'll be ready for the square dance here in just no time. 
Ow, low bridge, that hurt. <laughs> That's what you get for wearing a hat. Thank you.